Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is part 8 of .NET full stack series. So if you're watching this video for the first time, then I will highly recommend you guys to go ahead and watch all the previous seven part and then you can start with this video. So in the previous video, we saw like how we can make use of migrations in by using EF core and we saw like whatever the DB sets what we have created, all of them got created into a table inside this angular blog YTDB. Okay. And this is how the DB looks like at the moment where we have these five tables and then we have one more table which is the sixth one which helps you to maintain the migration history. So in this part eight of this video, we are going to discuss about what is a repository pattern because in this clean architecture, right? What we will be doing now, we have to start writing our APIs where we have to fetch the user roles blog and comment and all that. Okay. So to fetch all this entity from the database or because we have to do the interaction, like we have to create the CRUD operation. Okay. CRUD means like, you know, right? We have create, read, update and delete. So we have to start using that so that our application can be built. Okay. So to perform that operation, operation, right? So we are not just using a controller directly one project and doing our job in a single controller. We have designed our project into clean architecture. So we have to adhere to that principle. So before even starting with the API creation, so let me help you by understanding that what is a repository pattern and how this can help us. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, if you want to learn the implementation of this video, like what is generic repository and I generic repository, you can consider watching to the next part because this part will only include all the theory about what is repository and generic repository pattern. So the repository pattern is an just an abstraction layer that sits between your applications domain logic. Okay. Uh, between your domain and your infrastructure because as I told you right the interface for the repositories will sit inside the domain and the implementation will sit inside your infrastructure all right so why we actually do this because instead of dealing with the low level data access code directly in your domain right so what you can do you can interact with your repositories that is encapsulating your data access logic like for example when you create the API right in your controller and it will go to the service so the service will don't know like what is actually happening in the data logic like what kind of data logic they have built because your business logic will directly go and access the repositories okay so this is what it means the encapsulating the data access logic so we will encapsulate them inside this particular domain and then implementation will be inside this infrastructure okay now let's take an example here, right? So for example, for us, we are creating a blog project, then this is how the repository might look like. So in the domain layer, what we will do, we'll create our interfaces. So here we have this I blog repository and what this guy has, right? Uh, so you, when you create a blog, right? So you, you have access to add it into, into the database, add the blog, update the blog, delete the blog. And if the blog is there, then you can do get all blogs or get blog by ID. Let me change it to blog. This should return blog not product okay and this should be my add blog repository yeah this makes more sense now so what we will do right so this is the interface what we will be creating so now we will have to implement this interface inside your infrastructure because as i told you right in clean architecture the center the domain part is just your interfaces but your actual logic for data things or the DB things will be done inside the infrastructure. Uh, let me check that particular diagram where I was explaining you about the clean architecture. If you just go on Google also, right? Clean architecture and just go inside any images. So this is what I'm actually talking about. Okay, so if you see, this is my domain. So where my interface will sit. And as I told you, right, this infrastructure is responsible for doing all the logic related to the database. Okay, so that's where we will be doing our implementation of this interface. So now let's go again back to our example. So now we will be creating that I blog repository. Okay, just below here. And then what we can do, right? So for a blog will be handled by this I blog repository. So again, we have to do something similar for user. So we'll create I user repository and for role, we have to again create such an interface. So don't you think guys, all these implementations somehow are look like they look like similar, right? Like all the signature of, you see the name of the methods, it's all same. Only thing changes is the type of this particular entity. Correct. So from this right from repository pattern, there is a, another concept which is called as generic repository pattern. Okay. 
because what happens right if you create a repository pattern i know it's powerful but this guy leads to a code duplication as you already saw okay if you have like multiple entities or data models in your application then you have to create the repository for all of them so what we will do here right we will try to create a generic repository okay as an implementation of the repository okay so what we can do right rather than we creating all this file we'll create just a single generic repository okay which look like something like this okay okay so we'll have this i generic repository and what we can do right this is generic so we can just say us type t or you can say t entity just to be sure okay and this t entity will be replaced all over here okay so wherever you have the type defined for the entity you can just replace it with this t entity and now this is how the generic repository will look like now whenever you will be doing your implementation of this repository what you will do right you'll just try to inherit it by actually providing this particular t entity so for example you are doing it for a user all you need to do is right when you implement you just have to specify user here okay so don't worry i know this can be a bit confusing if you are a fresher or a beginner when i will doing i will be doing the implementation then things can make more sense okay because this is just a theory part where i'm trying to explain about what is repository and what is i generic repository now people can ask shashi why do we need this repository like what are the benefits like let's discuss about those benefits now like what it does right i what i know about the repository is that that it provides four crucial benefits the first thing is the separation of concern okay and how is it possible because our domain logic is decoupled now from the data access implementation okay so that's why i say it's very good for separation of concern the second most important thing is if you are creating a enterprise level application and if you are working for a company the testability will be high because what happens right you can actually create mock for your like if you have this interface you can create mocks for all your data access thing okay so which means that you can easily test this kind of logic like for example if you want to test your service which calls the repository so you can mock this particular repository all right and it adds a good flexibility as well which means like we can easily swap out the data access implementation like without even affecting the domain logic okay so that's why i always say this adds up the flexibility to your code and the last but not the least the abstraction okay which means our domain logic interacts with the higher level abstraction which is our repository interfaces so instead of dealing with this low level data access code we can achieve that kind of abstraction by using repository pattern all right so this was the theory of all about what is repository pattern and what is i generic repository pattern and how they are helping us to create a good scalable dotnet application so in the next video we will see like how we can uh, make use of generic repository pattern in our clean architecture dotnet full stack series okay so don't worry guys you must be thinking Shashi, I'll have to wait one day for the next part. It will not happen. I will be releasing the theory part and the actual practical video on the same day so that you can follow both the part on the same day and you can implement this inside your .NET full stack project. So that's it from this today's video. So if you have any question related to this topic, so you can mention them in the comment section. And if you really love my content, then I will urge you guys to consider subscribing to my channel like this video share this video with your friends so that they can also learn this dotnet thing if you have any feedback as well like how i can improve or what kind of another like more topic you want for me to cover in this series then do let me know that as well in the comment section so until next time see you guys bye bye and happy coding guys